uh, one thing that i feel is uh, you should uh, you know work consistently and uh, like you know keep doing it like uh, it might be um, uh, demotivating at times but uh, uh, you have to uh, bring yourself together and work so it's like consistency is what matters and keep revising hmm. uh, that's that's very important you have to uh, keep doing it like revising and uh, yeah and <laughs> be calm and patient <laughs> Hi everyone. So today I have uh, Gopika who cleared SEBI examination in the year 2020, and uh, she has scored uh, in paper two in phase two. She scored 81 in paper one, which is English. She scored a very respectable decent 58, and in the interview she scored nine. So uh, Gopika, first of all, congratulations to you. Thank you. Uh, a brief introduction about her through which you have you will have a good idea about her background is that she is a chartered accountant now you all must be thinking that she is a chartered accountant so it's, so it's very easy for her to get through an exam like sebi but it's not believe me because ca is a completely descriptive examination with a very vast syllabus but sebi on the other hand wants you to compress everything and convert everything that you read and learn into objective format So starting directly with the first question given that you are a chartered accountant was it as easy as people who are not uh, you know from the commerce background think it would be for CAs uh sir uh, i think it's um, like uh, it's it's kind of a revision it was kind of a revision for me paper 2 uh, i'd admit that uh, but then uh, it was not very easy because uh, it's a competitive exam so that is a, a completely different uh, way in which they're testing you mm-hmm. uh, so uh, especially with paper 1 that was not my area so uh, mm-hmm. paper 1 was a challenge for me mm-hmm. Uh, so maybe for a uh, a non commerce uh, person paper 1 would be his strength but for mm. me paper 1 was the a challenge and even for paper 2 um, i had to know to what level i have to go I-, i cannot waste my time so time is something that's very important in a competitive exam so mm. uh, i should know where i have to stop anything i learn should not go too much like you know it shouldn't be like you know, i'm wasting time on unnecessary areas so so that is that is that in itself is a challenge mm-hmm. so these are the two things that you know uh, that i had to keep in mind when i was going forward uh, with uh, studies you yeah. know that's an interesting point because every day especially this year's batch of rbi i see that a lot of students when we started in may a lot of students were almost doing phd in the subjects that i was teaching and now they are realizing okay maybe we were spending too much too much time on these subjects so Yeah. identifying the horizon of your studies i think it's very important especially because we are dealing with competitive examinations yeah. right yes so uh, because you are a qualified ca you would have got a job anywhere else you must be working before this so what is it that attracted you towards sebi Uh, sir, uh, SEBI is an organization that you know we have been uh, hearing about from I think from 11th, uh, the, you know when we uh, do our commerce, and then you know even after that we keep hearing about this organization, and it's an organization with which we as chartered accountants you know very closely have to work with, hmm. uh, especially in you know when we do the audits of companies we have to ensure compliance with SEBI Act, so it's an organization that we all uh, view with a lot of respect. Hmm. Uh, so when I saw this. Um, you know when i came to know that sebi is you know recruiting uh, it didn't take me you know uh, much time to uh, decide upon this hmm. and i was working in a private company before hmm. and uh, it it was it gave me a lot of exposure um, and I, you know i i could learn a lot of things hmm. uh, but then uh, then i thought okay um, i it, I know I just wanted to do something for my country uh, hmm. so i thought okay uh, being in an organization like this will help me uh, you know uh, do something for my country that is that is uh, honestly speaking that was one thing that came to my mind mm-hmm. uh, and yeah i think uh, i could relate i mean to this with my profession it's closely aligned with my profession yeah that that brings me to a very interesting question as to how important is a purpose a good purpose when you're applying for such an examination whether it's sebi or rbi or anything else because majority of the times to be very honest i hear that students are applying for this not because they want to work for their country not because they have a higher purpose but because they want a job 
but because they want security okay so those kind of basic elements are still the determining points of for applying in these examinations so how important do you think is that small purpose that you had in your mind when you applied uh sir i think um see it it all matters like you know uh, the security and everything so so but when you're working in an organization like this it's uh, it's it's a regulator so you know it's it's actually a dream for everybody to work in a regulator right mm. and uh, you you get to the uh, kind of uh, the horizon uh, the the uh, amount of knowledge you're going to gain is mm. definitely more than what you would gain in a private organization right. because when you work in a private organization you are basically your uh, opportunities or the areas in which you work are mostly the same mm. like uh, uh, at least in the organization that i worked in there is not much of a job rotation or, or anything like you know mm. very monotonous right but when you work in an organization like this mm. i've heard that there you know you frequently change your departments you get to know about the uh, different areas in which uh, you know you can it it that, that's something that attracted me right 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 i think that makes a lot of sense and for all the students who are thinking of writing it please have a purpose before you decide to write such examinations that is very important let me take you towards the weakness that i saw in your and then we'll talk about the strength uh, so i i saw that your english marks are a little less compared to a lot of other students who have cleared have you analyzed and have you asked yourself why were they less yeah actually i'm doing it even now <laughs> it is uh, my preparation for descriptive english uh, i i thought it was uh, i didn't know that there was a lot of flaws in my preparation because I, sir i can actually tell you how i did and i don't know if there is any uh, mistake in the way i prepared mm-hmm. so maybe you can analyze that and uh, you know candidates out there can also um, you know uh, benefit from it yeah yeah exactly yeah. Mm-hmm. so uh, i used to take a lot of mocks so my preparation for english was basically on started with mocks so i used to do uh mock test every day mm. and um, i used to write all three that is uh, comprehension uh, uh, pressy and uh, essay mm. and i used to write the essay first mm. uh, and um, you know it was with evaluation some of the mm. papers were with evaluation and mm. then i would go google google and get the additional points so it was not like i used to google first and then i used to write i used to write because uh, when you go for the exam it's spontaneous right mm. so i used to write the essay first and then i used to supplement it with uh, additional information mm. and i also used to write down the uh, areas i mean the kind of uh, points that i can put in every essay mm. for example um, i used to write down the uh, mortality rate uh, gdp so these are points that you can put in every essay mm. like uh, like that so i used to make those points and i used to revise those points Mm. before my mock starts is to do that mm. uh so and then uh, pressy uh and uh, comprehension i used to just uh, limit to the uh, words that was one thing and mm. even essay but then uh, for the exam i believe uh, i uh, for my essay was kind of 10 words in excess mm. yeah that's uh, one thing mm. uh, so it is very difficult for me to limit my words so that mm. is it was a challenge for me mm. uh, but mocks help mm. you know, and um, and for the uh, exam i took a topic that was related to paper 2 like mm. uh, the topic i took was teamwork because i knew that i would be able to write something uh, related to management because mm. we have studied management and teamwork is closely related to management so mm. i m- made sure that i took a topic that is related to something that i studied like paper 2 mm. mm-hmm. so that's how i wrote my essay but i don't know something didn't work out <laughs> how many essays did you practice before the exam You said uh, that you used to write every day. Yeah. Um, so I think I did it. Uh, maybe a uh, fifteen to twenty essays I would have written. Like twenty. Mm. Uh, yeah, twenty essays I would have written. Twenty essays you wrote on your own, and then you prepared their answers as well. Yes. Okay, and then you got them evaluated. I think from me also. I remember, Gopik. I don't know if I'm right or wrong. Yeah. So what was the feedback there when I checked your essays and when when I provided you the answers and the marks? Uh, sir, I think uh, uh, the uh, there were uh, kind of uh, spelling mistakes and uh, you know uh, some here, here and there there were grammar mistakes because see I have to I I um, I had to limit my words and time was a constraint so I used to write it you know 
quickly so mm. there were a lot of careless mistakes that were there mm. uh, and uh, so i used to you know keep in mind that okay i have to keep some time for checking so mm. that was there and uh, but i don't know that 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 was one feedback that you gave me mm. like, was was there any feedback regarding structure or structure of the essay or anything like that mm, no sir but then introduction no. was introduction used to be a little uh, kind of lengthier so i had to limit my introduction to the uh, you know it should be very uh, kind of limited and yeah and you followed that in the final exam yeah i think i did <laughs> so see uh, what i can gather from this is that you did write a lot of tests that is good uh, that must have helped but i think one major mistake that we make with english or with any kind of descriptive writing is we believe that 10 15 days are going to be enough Mm. there's a lot of unlearning and relearning involved in writing i remember the kind of writing that i used to do 4 years back i don't do that anymore but it has taken me a lot of time to change it almost 4 years right it takes a lot of time if i start writing today after a month i will start seeing small small differences or small small improvements so it takes time therefore your writing must have been fine there, there would be no problem in it but the small mistakes that you're making for example structure as far as i remember i don't remember it completely but what i remember is structure might have been a problem wherein if you're required to give let's say 50 words to one topic inside an essay uh, let's say 50 words to each topic and then you have to write let's say four points four topics or four points you end up spending let's say 100 words in first point and then only 20 words in second point yeah. okay so what that does is that puts the examiner off he feels that you don't un- you you're not before writing you're not thinking you're just just writing whatever is coming to your mind okay and as a checker uh, we are immediately able to identify that that difference okay she spent 100 words in first point and then now she's just summarizing the second point she's not explained it enough so that might be one of the problems yeah that often comes with students who are good at writing but because they just want to go with the flow and they don't know how to stop themselves they end up spending more time on one part of the essay and less time on the other okay so that just yeah. disturbs the balance and instead of getting let's say if the essay is 40 marks instead of getting 70% 28 he will end up giving you 55 or 60% so you have immediately lost 4 marks 6 marks okay? yes so that takes your uh, you know final score down by a big oh. margin so that might be one of the reasons in fact uh, uh, okay so let's move forward i think otherwise we'll end up spending a lot of time on this yeah. only uh, let's now come directly to the sequence of studies that you followed and how did you prepare for all the six subjects one by one so what kind of sequence did you follow and how did you prepare yeah uh, so uh, so the sequence that i followed so uh, basically i used to complete one subject and then move to the next mm. uh, and um, i used to like i started my preparation with company law mm. uh, so i used to watch her lectures mm. and uh, take down notes so that was the um, first step step mm. and then that the lecture notes that i prepare that is the base for me Mm. and then i used to supplement it with a lot of mocks i used mm. to do a lot of mocks on multiple sources mm. uh, so uh, mock tests will help me understand uh, like what exactly are they te- are they testing mm. so um, i'll start with company law so for company law i used to watch her lectures and i uh, took down the notes uh, but then when i um, went into the mcqs i i understood that there are some questions from the proviso so it's mm. not very common but there are questions from proviso Hmm. So what I did is I um, used the ICSI's website and I used to read the Bear Act. Hmm. Uh, so they have these free Bear Acts, you know, the entire act you can uh, read. So hmm. um, and I, you know, it's, it's very difficult to go into every proviso and read. But hmm. then uh, whatever provisos, I mean, I've seen questions. I make sure that I at least read those. Hmm. So that was one thing for company law. And hmm. company law, uh, all that you need is revision. Uh, hmm. Between uh, sections, penalty, everything requires a lot of revision. So the content is uh, very precise, very concise. Uh, you just have to revise it. Hmm. And if you revise it, you're sure to get your marks. So hmm. uh, uh, that's why I started with company law so that I can revise it the maximum number of times. Hmm. Uh, then I took up costing hmm. uh, because costing is light on theory and you know more to do with problems. Um, costing um, again, I used to take down the notes and. Uh, for uh, some chapters like um, 
standard costing or process costing uh, i used to watch quick videos on youtube uh, just to you know understand the the way in which it flows so just to supplement mm-hmm. and that also helped me so that's how i did my costing Mm-hmm. uh then after costing i took up economics uh, and economics uh, comparatively is a subject that requires a little more time uh, because uh, it involves a lot of theories and it's very important that you understand the theories properly uh like if it's keynesian theory you should know what it is because the, when the questions come it can be a little you know time consuming and a little difficult so uh economics is one subject that i give a little more time yeah and then i took up accounts uh, because accounts uh, is a lighter subject uh, uh, you know because it's and accounts i can tell you is related to company law uh, see for example a buyback so if you know the provision then the accounting becomes easier so you just have to link it with companies act when you study it mm. uh, that's one thing mm. after accounts i did finance um, finance is very heavy so you mm. need vision again uh, mm. and after that finally i took up management mm. so this is the uh, sequence in which i studied mm. and i think uh, the uh, the basic point is uh, keep writing notes i mean if you have that habit it's always better to write notes and so that you don't have to revisit the lectures again uh, you ha- that will help you save a lot of time so go ahead and revise the notes over and over again mm. yeah so that's one thing that i followed so you uh, use the lectures as well as the pdfs and combine them together to make your own notes Yeah, I used to watch the lectures. I used to take down the notes simultaneously. Hmm. Then I used to just read the PDF quickly. Uh, hmm. And then if there are some additional points, I used to you know take it down. Perfect, perfect. So, how much time did it take for you to cover these six subjects? Uh, so I actually put uh, one week for one subject, but uh, hmm. for uh, economics, maybe it would have been uh, one week and three days more. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. that that's how i so maybe okay. around in 8 weeks i would have uh, completed. completed the syllabus so what do you think for a student who is not from commerce background how much time number 1 is required and number 2 you've already mentioned notes but i think a lot of students including a lot of us are very lazy are too lazy nowadays to keep writing we're so used to typing or we're so used to not and write that we've forgotten how to write so how that how did writing help you towards the end also yeah so um uh, see writing actually helps me because um, when i watch a youtube video uh, i cannot simply watch a video because then it tends to be very boring for me like mm. i need to do something simultaneously so that i am engaged mm. so that's why i started writing so mm. that you know i'll also have a goal okay when sir mm. is telling this i have to write this down mm. so uh, it, it's a it's kind of a two way process mm. so i write it and then sometimes i pause and i write so, mm. so at the at the end of the particular lecture i have my notes for that chapter ready mm. so that also gives me a sense of satisfaction okay i've written it down now i don't have to uh, spend time again on the video i can use this and mm. that notes uh, i've used for my phase one phase 2 and even for interview uh, finance i used to refer the same notes mm. so it's like one time job once mm. you do it uh, you can revisit it in the right right yeah and the other question <laughs> yeah uh, so for um, uh, uh, candidates who are not in the uh, commerce uh, back who do not have a commerce background i think it's um, it's not difficult for them also because uh, see all that they test for sebi is uh, not in depth analysis of anything it's the basics hmm. and uh, for basics if you um, enroll in a good uh, enroll for a good course hmm. uh, and you get to know i mean the way they teach is very comprehensive so hmm. when, if you try to understand that that itself is sufficient hmm. and all that you need for paper 2 is revision hmm. you have to uh, Uh, get the class. I mean, you have to listen to the classes. You have to take down notes. Have your concepts clear. Mm. Uh, you don't have to do lengthy problems or go in depth. Mm. Uh, but be very clear with the basics because mm. they are actually testing the basics. Mm. So I think uh, you know if uh, you are clear with the concepts, then it doesn't matter if you are a commerce or a non-commerce graduate. Yeah. I think very well said. Yeah, makes sense. Uh, okay, very small question. Uh, probably you already answered it but yet again did you read any books or did you uh, limit yourself to youtube and the courses that you took in no i didn't read any other material uh, mm. i i just um, i i used to solve mcqs so that is 
I think that's very important. Mm. Uh, and I didn't read any other material, but um, uh, towards the end, that is when I was doing preparing for interview, mm. uh, I went to ICA's website. Mm. Uh, and um, so now ICA has a for CA final there is a paper on securities market. Mm. Uh, so that is new to me because when I studied this paper was not there. Mm. So I uh, referred the materials because uh, you know it explains in a in very simple terms uh, the different uh, uh, securities market uh, terms. Hmm. So I thought, okay, that would be useful because if uh, during in the interview if they ask me some uh, basic terms, I should hmm. be able to explain it. So hmm. I read that. That's the only additional material that I. Arrested. So any questions that the uh, if you remember any questions that you can think at the back of your hand that they asked you in the interview. Yeah, sir. Um, I think uh, one point that I would like to add here about interview is uh, your presence of mind is very, very important uh, mm. because uh, the first question that they asked me what it was about consumer protection rules. Mm. So I was, um, I, I was thinking, okay, I'm going for SEBI interview. So I had investor protection in my mind, mm. and the moment they asked me about consumer protection, I started explaining about investor protection, and it was after maybe one minute. That I realized, okay, I'm talking about cons- uh, investor protection here. Mm. So th- that was the very first question, mm. and uh, you know, I was I was feeling like you know, oh my god, I messed it up. Mm. So it's very important to have presence of mind. Mm. So you have to be uh, the first, and it might be unrelated questions. So mm. they might test you with unrelated questions mm. uh, just to see how. Uh, how you can answer it not i mean not that you can answer it correctly but how you'll deal with it mm-hmm. yeah so that was one question that they asked mm. how did you deal with any other questions that were probably not from your not from the areas that you had prepared let's say in advance yeah so uh, there were a lot of questions which i could not answer mm. and uh, i told them that i'm not able to recollect it uh, mm. uh, i think um, they they had asked me about um, um, about NCLT, so there was some mm. uh, recent news about NCLT, which was uh, which I was not aware of. Mm. So the thing is, uh, if you're not able to answer it, uh, it's okay. I mean, you don't have to think about that, and neither are they going to uh, keep asking you. Like you know, they'll just go forward with the next question, and right. you should make sure that you are flowing with it. You just move move on mm. to the mm. next question. Mm. You don't have to uh, think about uh, the fact that you didn't answer the previous question. So that's very important. Is what I. Sure. Right, right, right. Before closing up, I think that's a very good advice because RBI interviews are coming and coming up, and uh, that is one thing that I keep repeating that students have to take one question at a time as it comes. Right. So before closing up, any uh, any advice or anything that you would want to mention to the aspirants of tomorrow who are going to prepare again for SEBI? Yeah. So uh, it's not like an advice or anything, but then uh, one thing that I feel is uh, you should uh, you know work consistently and uh, like you know keep doing it like uh, it might be um, uh, demotivating at times but uh, uh, you have to uh, bring yourself together and work so it's like consistency is what matters and keep revising hmm. uh, that's that's very important you have to uh, keep doing it like revising and uh, yeah <laughs> perfect perfect i think the see the, the simple things in life are the most important at times and revision and consistency these are the things that we often ignore that we take for granted and these are the small small habits that decide whether we win or lose whether we uh you know are successful happy or not right uh thank you so much gopika i think uh, the students have must have gained a lot from this session they would certainly have some new insights through your preparation and they would have an idea better idea better idea as to how to prepare and what not to do thanks a lot gopika thank you so much sir for having me here